magazine recommendation. This is Patricia and I am traveling for history. I haven't done a magazine recommendation in a while and uh, I was reminded of that because uh, about an hour ago I was having a conversation in the YouTube comments with someone who had subscribed to Archaeology magazine. Yay! Um, and super happy for uh, for that person and uh, I, I, ex I suspect, I, ex I expect that, uh, that there'll be a lot of enjoyment because it's a fabulous magazine. If you haven't watched that uh, video, I'll link it to this one and you can watch it at your leisure. I've also recommended World War II magazine, also really, really fabulous. And I have another recommendation, magazine recommendation for you. This is another one that I absolutely love. I will say if you buy it at the newsstand, you will have sticker shock. It ain't cheap. Uh, so a subscription is usually a lot less expensive than buying it at the newsstand. But buying it at the newsstand makes sense since um, you'll then uh, get a feel for it. But, you know, if you go to go to a place like Barnes & Noble bookstore, um, I have seen plenty of people sitting there reading magazines and not buying them. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not even suggesting you do that. I'm just saying what I've seen. Um, uh, libraries also are a good place to see if they carry the magazine that you're interested in. So you don't necessarily have to buy them. You could just enjoy them at the library. So what magazine am I talking about today? I know you want to know. And it is this one. National Geographic History. Now, this is showing backwards to me, so I don't know what it's looking like to you. Um, this is fabulous. And I'll, and I'll, so in case you couldn't read those titles in any way, I'll just, I'll just throw them out. There's a lot of different topics, different uh, genres of history, um, sort of like Archaeology Magazine, but this is a little different from that. So if you've got Archaeology Magazine, you would still be able to enjoy this one um, on top of that. So one of the articles in here is Jesse James, Rise of an American Outlaw. But if Old West U.S. history is an, of int any interest to you, <gasps> um, how about Prince of Thieves hunting down the real Robin Hood? But if British history isn't your thing, how about killing Cicero, death of the Roman Republic. Roman history, not your thing? All right, how about, um, how about birth of the big screen? The cinematograph. I apologize if I just butchered the French. But if that's not your thing, but that, that's a really interesting article. Um, how about this one? And, and, and understand this is near and dear to my heart. Egyptian justice, crime and punishment in the New Kingdom. I think that's why I bought this magazine, because I bought this on the newsstand. This is the January, February 2019 edition. I know, I, I, I keep some magazines. Uh, but 20, in 2019, the U.S. price for this magazine was $9.99. Nine, ten bucks, ten bucks for a magazine. Even I am outraged at that price, which is why I suggest suggested other suggest had other suggestions for you. But the Canadian price was twelve bucks. Ah, I feel your pain. But if those articles aren't enough to get you going, then um, let's see. How about these others in here? Packed with bones and artifacts, a lakeside cemetery in Kenya is revealing insights into the lives of ancient Africans nearly 5,000 years ago. No? How about in 16th century Europe, the violin's popularity surged as it brought both fiddling to the fireside and sublimity to the concert hall? Or even this one. La Labella's rock-hewn churches awed Portuguese travelers in the 1500s. 
Built by a 12th century king of Ethiopia, the stone complex served as his vision of a new Jerusalem. There really is something for everyone in here. And dare I say, also, <laughs> I like the advertisements in these magazines too. Uh, clearly, they're designed for people who love history. I suppose that's no duh. But, um, for instance, The Great Courses. Now, uh, that's a, this is an advertisement. The Great Courses. I know a little more free advertising for them. but Well, free advertising for them, I suppose. But, you know, if you have an Audible.com subscription, you can listen to The Great Courses as part of the Audible, as part of your Audible membership. Do note that if that's the case, that some, some of them fall off and then they're only available through if you pay for them. I'm not a fan of that, to be perfectly honest. So, um, and my pockets are very shallow these days. Um, so anyway, I, I do like the advertisements as well in here. Um, but uh, something else that's absolutely fabulous about this magazine, the same with archaeology too, is the sumptuous full-color photographs and um, <laughs> oh an article I didn't uh, I forgot to suggest to you um, another one that's near and dear to my heart um, and that is the ancient roots of Indo-European languages today some three billion people speak a language on the Indo-European family tree whose mysterious origins Go back to the dawn of civilization. And um, this, I mean, we're talking two pages of luscious, stark color. Uh, this, it's, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I have said this in um, s some other video that um, when I was a kid, it was incredibly unusual to see full color pictures in magazines or um, books. Um, I remember when I was in grade school, third grade? I think it was third grade, social studies class. It's like a precursor to history here in the U.S. Um, the teacher was boring me. Oh, boring, droning on. And uh, I was flipping forward a few pages, and in the lower right-hand corner was a full-color photograph of Sumerian statuary. Wow! Sumerian statuary. And I thought to myself, if I could do something in... in in that vein, that I'd be very happy. Um, I didn't follow that particular portion of the dream, but the full color photograph was amazing to an eight year old's eyeballs. And now, as a 50 years later, oh my God, 50? 50 years later, I'm still enthralled by full color in a Booker magazine. Depends on your upbringing, doesn't it? Um, so we know that this magazine has beautiful photographs. And uh, let me show you some more so you get an idea of how gorgeous this stuff is. How about Law and Order in the New Kingdom? Another two-page spread of full-color photographs it's it's really astonishing but you know how is the writing oh actually let me show you this one too <laughs> this one on this page here um, there we go I think can you see it <laughs> sorry about that I can't really see behind it um, I can't see behind it but this one here. So this, Judge and Pharaoh, 
a lintel. We know what a lintel is, right? It's the uh, piece above a door or window that uh, carries the weight of the roof. I've talked about that in countless uh, buildings on the National Register. I watch almost any one of them. I'll talk about lintels. Uh, so this one, Judge and Pharaoh, lin lintel from the Temple of Amun-Ra at Karnak depicts Amenhotep I, the second ruler of the 18th dynasty. This warrior king expanded the borders of his realm and was deifi deified after his death. His cult consulted his statue on questions of justice. Amazing, no? But to get back to my last question, how is the writing, though? How is the writing in this? Is it really that good? Yes, it's got sumptuous, full-color pictures. We've heard you, Patricia. But, but, um, Sarge says hi. Um, but how is the writing? Well, let me share with you some writing. So this is from the article on Cicero. Um, Killing Cicero, Death of the Roman Republic. It's from that article there. And I'll read you the section under... Death of an Orator. You can't see that. Maybe now. Death of an Orator. By the way, uh, in in these magazines, you'll see these subscription, no, these subscription postcards. Um, you don't necessarily have to recycle them right away. They make excellent bookmarks. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hundred one uses for these things. Paper airplane, anyone? All right, death of an orator. So I've been quoting throughout, but you know, quote. Devastated that the Republican cause was now lost, Cicero withdrew from Rome to spend time in his rural retreats in southern Italy. From there, he looked on powerlessly as Octavian, reconciled with Antony, eventually formed the second triumvirate with him and Lepidus. Not only does Cicero feel this was a step back, uh, backward politically, it also posed a serious personal threat to his life. The triumvirs put together a long list of senators and other citizens who should be proscribed or condemned to die. The vengeful Antony managed to include Cicero's name, despite Octavian's initial reluctance. Cicero was at his villa in Tusculum with his brother Quintus when he found out that they were both on the hit list. Fearing for their lives, they left for the villa in Astera, from there intending to sail to Macedonia and be reunited with Marcus Brutus. But at one point, Quintus retraced his steps in order to pick up provisions for the journey. Betrayed by his slaves, Quintus was killed a few days later along with his son. Cicero, by now in Astera, was racked with fear and doubt as to what he should do. He set off by boat, but after just a few miles, he amazed everyone by disembarking and walking toward Rome in order to return to his Astra villa and from there be taken by sea to his villa at Formiae. There he planned to rest and gather his strength before the final push onward to Greece. Too hesitant, too late. Realizing that Antony's soldiers were about to catch up with him, Cicero headed through the forest toward the port of Gaeta, from where he hoped to escape. The soldiers, led by Herennius, a centurion, and Popilius, a tribune, who had once been prosecuted for parricide and defended by Cicero, found his villa already abandoned, but a slave, 
called Philologus, showed them which way Cicero had gone. They had no trouble catching up with him and performing their murderous deed. Antony ordered that the severed head and right hand be displayed as trophies on the rostrum in the forum so that all Rome could contemplate them. The rostrum was the very platform from which Cicero had been acclaimed by the crowds for his oratory. The force of arms had prevailed over the power of words. Unquote. Very well written articles. I highly recommend this. I do. Um, it's, it's so good. You'll be riveted. Before you know it, you'll be finished reading the magazine and wondering, well, where's the rest of it? <laughs> When's the next copy coming out? It's every other month. So this is a January-February edition, so you have to wait for um, March, the March-April edition. And I can tell you right now, you, you'll be looking forward to it. Like, I don't know what. National Geographic History Magazine. Outstanding. It's also... You, it has a really nice um, edge to it. So you can actually read, if you have it in your bookshelf, which one is which. And the um, edge here says, National Geographic History, January, February 2019, Rise of Jesse James, Justice in Ancient Egypt, Death of Cicero, Robin Hood. So you, you know exactly which one you're looking at. Anyway, great stuff. And on to the social media piece because, you know, it's my job to drum up business for me. So uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. I'm everywhere you are. On uh, three of those... Instagram, Facebook, and um, TikTok. I'm traveling for history, just like YouTube. One L in traveling. But on Twitter, my the name of my channel was too long, so it's traveling for high one. Traveling still has one L, and high is H I, and uh, it's the numeral one. So traveling for high one. So follow me wherever you you uh, wish, and uh, subscribe to my channel for more neat stuff. And um, until I see you again. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. And since this is December 24, I hope you have a fabulous holiday. See you soon.